A very common injury in sports are collarbone or clavicle fractures. And so I think it's important for athletes, whether it's a weekend warrior or an elite athlete, to understand some of the injuries they may face uh, in relation to an injury to the collarbone. The collarbone runs from the chest over to the shoulder. When it attaches at the chest, we call that the sternoclavicular joint. When it attaches at the shoulder, we call that the acromioclavicular joint. And then the bone is between the two. And you can have different injuries at every segment along the way. When it's an injury at the sternoclavicular joint, it does one of two things. We call it a dislocation, and it either dislocates to the front, and that's called an anterior sternoclavicular joint dislocation, or it dislocates to the back, and that's called a posterior sternoclavicular joint dislocation. An anterior dislocation has very little consequence on function. It can have a cosmetic impact because it can leave a little prominence just to the side of your sternum, and it's mostly just cosmetic in nature. You can feel it, you can see it, but it usually doesn't cause any problems or pain or functional limitations. Now, a posterior dislocation is a far more significant injury. In terms of just about anything we see, especially around the collarbone, a posterior sternoclavicular joint dislocation is arguably the most serious injury we can see because of the important structures that are behind it. The arteries that leave the heart and the structures that help with breathing sit right behind there. So the concern is not so much that the bone may be injured, it's that the bone may be pushing on some of those vital structures. So that is an emergency. So if it's not a posterior dislocation, we usually have a lot of leeway on how we want to manage the sternoclavicular joint injuries and the majority of the time we can treat those purely symptomatic. When we get to the far side of the collarbone at the acromioclavicular joint, it's similar in the setting of it usually is a dislocation or often referred to as a separation. And the majority of those can also be managed conservatively. We grade those in severity from one to six, and most grade ones, two, and most of the threes can be managed conservatively. When you start to get four, five and six, and then if a grade three just isn't getting better, you do a surgery to basically push the collarbone back down and hold it there with a new set of ligaments because they got injured at the time of the original injury. So again, an AC joint separation is one that for the most part we can manage symptomatically and with physical therapy and rest, but if you start to get into one of those higher grade injuries, we may need to talk about fixing it. And then for the athlete, it would take a four to six month recovery time to get over that. In the middle is 100% a bone issue. So if you injure the collarbone in the middle, you're breaking the bone. And because the collarbone is so close to the skin, it's uh, very common to injure this bone because it doesn't have a whole lot of support or protection to avoid injury. So a fall uh, or running into a uh, object can cause a collarbone to break. A number of these injuries can also be managed conservatively and often go on the heel without a significant impact on function. But if the break is too separated, uh, we will sometimes fix that. And then that can often mean putting plates and screws to line up the break so that it can then heal. The drawback there is that because the collarbone is so close to the skin, oftentimes that plate and those screws can be felt and we often recommend taking out the hardware once the bone is healed. But we find that especially in those really displaced injuries that the athletes uh, can do better if we line the bone up, let it heal, and then eventually remove the plate so that you can go on to have a anatomically reduced and healed fracture. The nice thing is that most injuries can be managed conservatively, but for those that do require operative fixation, they do have a predictable outcome where we can usually get the uh, function back and the anatomy back to what it was before the injury and hopefully let the individual get back to doing what they want to do.